once again, we begin with CQ, CQ, <laughs> the old Morse code, which says, uh, we're on the radio. Are you there? Are you listening? We'd like to talk to you. And uh, that's exactly what we want to do. My name is Stan. I call myself Stan the Radio Man, and uh, we are one of the creators of things called personal on-demand radio or podcasting programs uh, at your convenience whenever you want, just for you. Personal on-demand broadcasting. And the program is Interesting Ideas because we want you to find things and actually be, be more interesting. Because interesting people with interesting ideas have a greater impact on our world today. And we want you to be one of those good people who do just that. Because the world is in a bit of a mess. It's going to be an interesting and maybe a, a not very pleasant summer here in the United States. And obviously, uh, the situations throughout the world are certainly not good at this time. Could we perhaps be somebody who brings some good into the world. Well, I'm going to tell you about a lady who uh, helped me better understand that. And uh, you read the title right. This program is about the lady in the church who showed me her Zippo cigarette lighter as one of her most precious possessions. That's right. What could that be about? A little old church lady with a Zippo cigarette lighter. Well, let's see where we go. I'm Stan Eusted. The program is Interesting Ideas, and I think you'll find this one very interesting. And uh, it's go. <laughs> It's still quite relevant for everybody. But a number of years ago, I, I did a uh, exercise for the men and women who were my clients in the financial services industry. Insurance, investments, uh, something that's a part of our life. And I was kind of the performance coach to many of the uh, very good men and women in that program. And they were always looking for marketing ideas. And that's why I wrote a book called The Difference Is You, and it was called a performance guide to how to market and sell you. Right. What we call personal performance marketing. That's still what I do because before anybody will buy your stuff or buy from you, they have to buy you. And until they buy you, no matter what your deal or no matter what your service is or no matter what your stuff is, uh, it's going to be a hard sell if they haven't accepted, trusted, and bought you. So that's what we were trying to teach people how to do that and to sell in a non-offensive way. And we got pretty good at that. One of the programs that I did is I called... Uh, your treasure chest. And uh, what the people would do is, particularly in their office, they would have a, you know, a little treasure chest, a little chest, you know, things you put things in. And here was the exercise. They would say something like this. You know, when it comes to uh, insurance and investments and estate planning, one of the questions that will be very helpful to you as we're making some plans is to ask you, what would you want to put in a treasure chest that you might pass on to people after you pass on? You know, yeah, you know, legacy, your kind of box of legacy stuff. What would it be? And so here's what we did. Here we go. The first question we ask is, hey, what are some of the memories you'd like to pass on? Think about that, you know. You know, people finally, you know, how do you want to be remembered, which uh, St. Augustine said was one of the key questions in life. How do you want to be remembered? What memories did you create? The first M word, what memories? I remember a number of years ago when um, 
Karen and I were able to <laughs> make our first cruise, and uh, we were flying down to Puerto Rico where we would catch the cruise boat. And I happened to be sitting by a gentleman, and we started a nice conversation. And uh, he informed me that um, he was one of 17 people on the airplane. I said, uh, a, a group? He said, my family. <laughs> That's right. Uh, me, my wife, uh, our four children, and the grandchildren were all going on a cruise. I said, well, tell me more. And he said, well, you know... <laughs> I was thinking all about that, and uh, so I went to my financial planner and kind of looked at things, and I said, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to take the whole family on a cruise for a week. Uh, you know, the grandchildren are all growing up, you know? <laughs> and so I found out that we had enough money to do that, so that's what we're going to do, and uh, the whole family's going to spend together, you know, all the, all the cousins and, and, you know, nieces and nephews are going to be there and my, my children and my grandchildren. And I said, the only thing you have to do is you have to promise to be with grandma and grandpa. We're all going to meet for dinner in the evening. After that, <laughs> you can have breakfast when you want. You can have lunch when you want. You don't have to do it. You can do anything you want to do. You don't have to do it with us. The only thing I ask is that we have a, a family dinner together. And he said, uh, I really am in the business now of creating some memories that they'll remember. Great. Uh, another thing we, I said that you could perhaps uh, put in uh, your treasure chest are uh, mementos. You know, nice little things that mean something to you. Um, yeah, you know, this scrapbook, this picture. Now, remember that. Mementos. Things that you're going to pass on. Maybe even before you die, you're, you know, or fertile, it's there afterwards. Now, remember that because that's where the story is going to come in. You can save mementos. Oh, that's a good thought. You know, yeah. You know, most of the stuff they're going to throw away. <laughs> and they, I said, you're right, you know. In the, the place where I live in Arizona, there are a lot of retired people. And what happens oftentimes when uh, people are gone, the, 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 the children, the grandchildren come down and, you know, uh, there's all kinds of stuff. Well, they take a little bit and then they call up the thrift shop and say, send your trucks out and take it all away and uh, uh, sell it for the charity causes. But uh, what would be some of your, uh, you know, mementos? Maybe a monument. <laughs> What's a monument? Well, it's it's where you leave something that uh, people can use or see. You know, for instance, uh, you leave a scholarship. That's a monument. You know, that you're displaying maybe something that's in memory of somebody. Uh, perhaps, as one of my friends did, he actually helped to build a a science building for a small college. <laughs> he he had the resources to do that. And there are small and big ways to leave a monument. And um, think about that. What are some of the monuments you might want to leave? And then, of course, you can leave some money. <laughs> okay, so you see, memories, monuments, mementos, and money. But there's one other one you might leave if you're not careful. And uh, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll come back to that. And then we'll go back to our story about the lady. I'm Stan, and uh, these are interesting ideas, and I hope they're helpful. Uh, we're about halfway through, and uh, then we'll be done. And I think it will uh, kind of challenge you, maybe even make you smile. Interesting ideas, what it takes radio, stanhousted at gmail.com, stanhousted at gmail.com. We'll be right back. Here we go. Well, um, here was the deal. 
And of course, this is where the financial planners and those people got involved. Because they said, you know, there's a very good chance that if you really don't have a will and, and a, a legacy plan financially, you could just leave a mess. <laughs> yeah. There you are, there's your property, there's your resources, there's some of your money, and uh, it's just a mess. You haven't done any estate planning, and so all of a sudden they've inherited property, and the property has an incredible value, which they have to pay taxes on. In effect, uh, the story is about the, some of the richest people who have died and what they left for their family was a mess, <laughs> which the family and the children just, you know, took lots of lawyers and lots of money and lots of time and expense to figure it all out and get settled up and uh, straight with the government. They left a mess. And of course, uh, their whole idea was, uh, let's make sure we have our wills, our legacy, our financial plan in place so we don't leave a mess for the people. So our, our widow, you know, if you're a successful man, you know, your widow isn't left a mess that she has to clean up after you or try to. So that's where that left. And so, and then the people began their planning by actually not just thinking about the money, but about, you know, some important things, memories. Well, after I gave that talk also similar in a church, uh, a lady came up to me, and uh, she thanked me so much. And she then she reached into her purse, and she said, I have a rather strange memento, but it's one of my most precious mementos. And um, I'd like to show it to you. Okay. She reached into her purse and pulled up an old, battered Zippo cigarette lighter. And I recognize that. <laughs> Um, in my younger days, I was foolish enough to smoke, not a great deal, but I also had a nice Zippo lighter. It's since been lost. And uh, I looked at it, and, I said, and she said, you think it's kind of strange that uh, this uh, little old lady in a Lutheran church has a Zippo cigarette lighter as a memento? And I said, well, it's different. <laughs> and she said, this is the lighter that my daddy had when he waded ashore on D-Day in Normandy. He was carrying this lighter. He came back alive, and uh, of course, we were grateful, and he lived a full life. But he always kept that as a part of a little his little box where he uh, had kept you know, some of his war stuff, and, you know, and some of the medals and ribbons he had and his ranking. And he said, but he also kept, he put in his cigarette lighter, his Zippo lighter that he had used when he first reached Normandy and after the first day of fighting, obviously, Grandpa, Daddy had a cigarette. And that was his lighter. And this is one of my most precious mementos. Reminds me of my daddy who fought in World War. And we just celebrated, of course, commemorated the uh, D-Day anniversary. Well, that was a fun story, and I hope perhaps you understand that maybe that's something that you need to think about. Maybe you actually have something that is that significant. Um, it could be a book. It could be something else that uh, is a memento, that uh, is a way for someone to remember you or for you to remember someone. What are the mementos you want to pass on? So, there we go. <laughs> what are the memories? What are the mementos? What are the monuments? What about the money? And please don't leave a mess. Just one more comment, and I'll be done. I'm Stan Houston, Interesting Ideas.
I would have to, because that's who I am, have to say that, uh, you know, uh, all of those things are things I'm trying to do. And right now, you know, my life is difficult in so many ways. And uh, I still have some work to do to make sure that memories and mementos and monuments and money are in place and that I don't leave a mess doing the best I can. But I also know that uh, what we also need to be able to leave to people is something that helps them understand what is truly important in our life. If you're people of character, people of faith, people of belief, people who want very much for the sense of importance and transcendence and faith to be a part of what you pass on. I remember one woman when I did an exercise on what would be the book you would like to write. She came to me and said, Stan, I'm writing four books. And I said, really? She said, yes, I am writing four books in the lives of my four children that I am hopefully raising and rearing and teaching and hopefully modeling what is truly important in life. So I will leave four living books. Good thought, good idea. There we go. That's the story about the little old church lady who had the Zippo cigarette lighter. And I hope the story has been meaningful to you. We can probably help you with a number of issues, particularly helping you get on the radio. We're going to help you with your coaching experiences, a number of things that we can help you live better now. Reach out to me at stanhousted at gmail.com, stanhousted at gmail.com. Best and blessings, and uh, what's in your treasure chest? Bye for now. Thank you.